We are observing Sanctity of Life Sunday in our church today, and that is the subject I'm going to be preaching about. Uh, if you have your bulletins and want to follow along with us, I have three points I want to share with you this day. Number one, the source of life. The source of life. Number two, the sanctity, sanctity of life. The sanctity of life. Number three, the significance of life the significance of life. You know, I believe our country has made three huge mistakes in its history. And again, this is my opinion. And uh, the three mistakes that stick out in my mind looking back, number one, they took prayer out of school. And I think that's a huge mistake. Number two, they took the Bible out of school also. And number three, we legalized abortion. And they all three has affected everything about our society. Folks, we live in a pagan world now, all right? And I'm not trying to be doomsday, but when you look at things that are going on in our world, I'm telling you, it just reminds me of the, what we are talking about even in Revelation, the, the old Babylon time, where there is you know, no fear of God, no respect for God, and people are worshiping foreign gods. And let me say this right now, we as Christians believe that life begins at conception. And life is so important, folks, so important. In America, since January 22nd, 1973, where Roe versus Wade legalized abortion, there have been over 63 million babies aborted in our nation. That is 1.2 million abortions a year. That's 3,288 abortions a day, 137 abortions every hour, and 26 abortions every second. Folks, that is a shame. These statistics do not include illegal abortions and women who have taken the anti-abortion pill to terminate a pregnancy. My friend, we have a huge problem in this country, and I'm happy to say that Arkansas is currently, currently has one of the strictest laws against abortion in the United States of America. But there are petitions, I want to warn you right now, being circulated to legalize abortion once again in our state. Please be in prayer about this issue. Uh, I was given today a sheet of the Family Council of Arkansas there are bullet points there of summary, uh, and they can be found in our church office if you want to know the details of this. And so we need to pray that that does not pass. Today, I want to give you scripture that supports our belief that life begins at conception. Let's look, in, let's look, let's look at the first of the Bible. All right, Genesis 1.1, the source of life. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Folks, we didn't come out of a pond, okay? There wasn't a whoosh-bang theory, all right? I believe in creation. God created everything we see. But you have to understand, God wasn't created. God always was. He is eternal, and you have to already exist to create something. And folks, God is in control of everything we do. God created everything that you see in our world. Then look at verse 26 through 28, Genesis 1. I'm going to give you enough scripture so that you can uh, you know, reason with someone that doesn't believe Life begins at conception. Verse 26 of Genesis 1, Then God let, let us make man in our own image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on earth. Listen to this. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. Then God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Folks, that's that union between man and woman. And it says, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every 
living thing that moves on earth. And then in Genesis 2-7, Genesis 2-7, and the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Folks, you wouldn't be here today if God did not breathe life into you. And man became a living being, a living being. Genesis 21, go on down to 221. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in his plate. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman. And somebody asked me one time, you know, how did he get woman out of man? I said, Adam looked at his wife and said, whoa, man. All right. I'm just telling you, there is a huge difference between a man and a woman. And everything God created, he said it was good. And I'm telling you, Satan takes everything that is good and he twists it with lies, with lies. And he brought her to, her, man, her to the man. And Adam said, now this is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh. This is God's plan. And folks, I am telling you, a marriage in God's sight is one man married to one woman. And even though this world says otherwise, we again, as a church and as our beliefs, stand on the Word of God. And it may not be the popular thing to do. Go ahead, go ahead. But I'm telling you, we follow God, not man. There are a lot of man-made rules that I don't agree with, and and the Bible certainly doesn't agree with. Verse 25, and they were both naked, a man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. Folks, I am telling you, God has made man in his own image. We were created by God. Life begins at conception, and God is the source of all life. Look at in James chapter 1. One more verse in this first one. James chapter 1. James 1, verse 16. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Folks, Satan wants to deceive us. Satan believes right is wrong and wrong is right. Folks, God is always right. I know even in our minds, people say, well, you're not always right. Well, no, I'm sure not. But God is always right. His his word is always true, yes and amen. Every good and every perfect gift is from, uh, from God, from above, and comes down from the Father of light. I tell you, folks, at conception, God starts the life of that baby. And that life is, is just at that time perfect. It needs to be protected, folks. It needs to be protected. And it says, and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. No variation. i tell you something else. Uh, that that is going on that is uh, against the Word of God, and that's transgender. What you are saying, if you believe in that, that God made a mistake. And folks, God, and you know, I do not hate the homosexual. I do not hate transgender. They need Jesus just like everyone else. But we can't wink at it. We can't act like this is not happening We as Christians, we are Christian-based. We have Christian doctrine. It is not normal. Read Romans chapter 1. We don't have time to go there, but read that chapter. Read it all the way through, 
and you will see what God thinks about these two issues. So, God is the source of all life. Number two, the sanctity of life. The sanctity of life. Look at Jeremiah 1. And I hope you got your finger wet for today, all right? Jeremiah 1, verse 4. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Oh, folks, God is all-knowing. He is all-knowing. He's saying, before you were born, God knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I set you apart. Life is sacred, folks. Life has meaning. And when you look at abortion, you can see how many babies that could have been doctors, could have been preachers, could have been missionaries, never got that life. I ordained you a prophet of all nations. That is what God said about Jeremiah. Look at Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, the sanctity of life. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Oh, folks, we are so blessed by God. We are so blessed. And it says, uh, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. He knew us. Before he created the world, he already knew us. And that blows some people's mind, but you have to understand the sovereignty of God. God is all-knowing. He knows everything. He puts everything in motion. And I'm telling you, the problem came in Genesis chapter 3 when Adam and Eve listened to Satan and listened to the serpent. And man fell. And sin entered the picture. And our choices today are either right or wrong according to the holy word of God. And I'm sorry to say, our country is not going by the word of God. People are making their own rules up. People are saying, I don't have to follow the word of God, and you don't. God gives you a joy. But folks, I am telling you, life is precious. Life is precious. He chose in us in him before the foundations of the world that we should be holy without blame before him in love. Oh, folks, we as Christians who breathe God's air, that has God's hand on our life, that gives us so many, uh, you know, so many blessings in our life, these things should be in our lives. We need to be holy. We need to love one another. We need to show people love. And folks, I understand protesting, but we don't need to do it out of hate. We don't need to be name-calling and being ugly. Love, having predestined, predestined us to the adoptions as sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Folks, God is in control of this world. God has blessed us with many blessings, and we need to follow the word of God. Life is is precious to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. Oh, folks, uh, you know, salvation changes everything in a person's life. And I want to say this, and I'll say it again at the end. Folks, if you have made this mistake, ladies, as Phil said, you are forgiven. I am not bashing you today. I'm simply telling you what the Word of God said. And we need to follow the Word of God. Forgiveness is there and very 
very important. Luke chapter 1. Man, I love this. Luke 1. Verse 39, earlier in the chapter, Christ's birth is announced to Mary. And it says in 39, Now Mary arose in those days and went to the hill country with haste to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the babe leaped in her womb. Folks, life begins that conception. The baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Folks, we're talking about Jesus here. We are talking about John the Baptist. Jesus, who was born of a virgin. I know that's hard for the world to understand, but again, the sovereignty of God is God placed Jesus in the person of the Holy Spirit inside of Mary. But yet, being filled with the Spirit, then spoke with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women. Blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Oh, folks, I'm telling you, we have to understand, you know, life, is a new life is, is just pure joy. And, and when you go to the hospital, I, I can still remember my two being born, all right? And, and especially Jonathan, the first one, all right? It was just, you know, one of the happiest days of our lives. And then even, I didn't even realize what I said. They come out. Uh, and they just said, you have a girl. And I said, what am I going to do with a girl? <laughs> you know how sometimes things just come in your head? <laughs> Folks, I love my daughter as much as I do my son. And they are both are precious, precious in God's sight. Blessed is she who believes, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told of her from the Lord. Judges chapter 13. Go with me to Judges 13. Judges 13. Verse 1. Again, the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines for 40 years. And folks, we know the history of Israel. Man, they'd do good for a while, and then they'd follow other gods. They'd do good for a while, and then they would worship other gods, and God would send them in captivity. Whether it was Babylon or the Philistines, that was their punishment for not following God. Now, there was a certain man from Zorah, the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and had no children. According to the word of God, she could have children. And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Indeed now, you are barren and bore no children, but you shall conceive and bear a son. Folks, an angel told her this. And it says, Now therefore, please be careful not to drink wine or similar drink, and not to eat anything unclean. For behold, you shall conceive and bear a son. Folks, my Bible says, with God, all things are possible. Ladies, I know sometimes it's hard to get pregnant. I know it's a challenge. But just pray. Just pray. Just believe in faith. And then, folks, if it doesn't happen, think about uh, adopting a child. Think about a child. And, and I was thinking about this, uh, you know, just this week as I prepared this sermon. What would it be like? I've never been there. But to be a child and your mother and your father abandon you, and then you just bounce around from house to house, a different one. And folks, children need 
stability. So pray about it. Pray about adoption or even fostering children. And no razor shall come to his head. And for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb. And he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistine. We know if we kept reading through uh, Judges chapter 13, Samson was born to this family. And Samson, even in his mistake, he made some big mistakes. But he did deliver Israel. Folks, God has a plan for everyone that's alive. He has a plan. And even if we alter that plan, even if we make choices, and, and folks, we've all done it. When we were younger, we made choices that we wished we hadn't made. But folks, God can give us another plan. God forgives us and loves us unconditionally. But we see the source of life. We see the sanctity of life. And just look at the significance of life. Turn to Psalm 139 with me, please. Psalm 139. The Bible says in verse 13, for you, were for, for you form my inward parts. Everything about you God has formed. You covered me in my mother's womb. Protection. Protection. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Folks, God does not make any mistake. He never has. And some people, you know, like some people are short, and they'll say, well, I wish I wasn't short. Some people are tall, and they're ducking under doors, saying, I wish I wasn't that tall. Some people are just naturally skinny, and I've got an issue with those folks. <laughs> skinny has never been attached to my body. I rolled out, you asked my mom, no, you can't ask my mom, <laughs> you, you look on my birth certificate, I rolled out at 10-9, I know, my mom was an angel, believe me, and I'm telling you, I've been fighting my weight ever since, but God made me this way, the gap in my tooth, <laughs> I had somebody tell me two weeks ago, you ever going to get that fixed? <laughs> And I thought, no, I'm not getting it fixed. I like my gap. <laughs> you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, your eyes saw my substance and being yet unformed and in your book, they all were written. Oh, folks, God knows your DNA. God knows your genetics. There are no two people that are exactly alike. Even twins, you can identify if you look long enough and you, you, you see and, and the personalities and have everything. And God, when he made you, I know sometimes even children and youth, they can be so mean to people. Okay, on a playground or when they don't like somebody, they'll say words that hurt folks. God made everyone that is here on this earth, and we need to love and we need to respect everyone. You are significant. You were fearfully and wonderfully made. Nobody else is like you. And even as the song we sang, I wrote down early in the week, every tear that falls, the scripture says, God knows all about it. Psalm 127. Psalm 127, verse 3. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. And folks, children are such a blessing. Such a blessing. And I'm not adding to the Bible, but I'm just giving you my, my opinion, okay? Not adding or taking away. Grandchildren are even better. Right. Can I get an amen? All right? 
I love, I love Jonathan and Kylie, but that Kylie, she cracks me. She makes me laugh. We were with her all day Friday, and I'm just telling you, she is something else. Praise God. <laughs> like an arrow in the hand of a warrior, so are children of one youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. Oh, folks, you, you, you have to understand, God gives us children. We have that responsibility to raise them in the admonition of our Lord and Savior. So, as we close this service today, I want to go back to what Phil said. Forgiveness is so important. God's not mad at you. God forgives. I think of folks in the Bible that mess up. Noah got drunk and uncovered himself. David committed adultery and murder. You can just go through the list of men and, you know, even women. You know, Rachel uh, uh, it was, a, was a harlot. Uh, Rahab, excuse me, uh, was, had the tag of a harlot. But yet God used her to protect his children. So ladies, forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. What's done is done. We are created in Christ Jesus. And when you got saved, the Bible tells us everything changes. God, matter of fact, Psalm 103, last, last scripture, 103, Psalm 103, 11, for as, high, for as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far, he has removed our transgressions from us. You are forgiven. And folks, we need to understand how important life is. We need to understand the importance, the, the importance of the sanctity of life. We need to teach it. We need to preach it. And we need to live how important sanctity of life is. Father, thank you for this day, and God, I just thank you for your word, and God, I just pray that you would just be with us, and God, we thank you for life. God, life is so wonderful. It's just beautiful. Lord, I've been at the hospital, and I've seen many, many births, and God, I just thank you, Lord, that you, you ordained that. God, you formed us. You made us into who we are. And God, I just pray, Lord, that uh, we would just follow your word. God, I just pray that uh, we would be testimonies of your mercy and your grace. God, I pray that we understand that we have been forgiven of all sin. We've been forgiven of sin. And God, I thank you that we are new in Christ Jesus. And God, I pray if there's one here today that doesn't know you, God, I pray they would understand that God loves them. God sent his son to die for them. His son was dead and was in a tomb, and three days later he arose, which gives us eternal life. God, today could be the first day of somebody's rest of their life if they would just come confess their sins. God, you're waiting on them. God, I pray that you would bless this time. Lord, if there's Christians that need to rededicate their lives, if some need to come and, and be a candidate for baptism or join this church, God, I pray that you would move on them. God, your Holy Spirit is here. And God, I pray that we would all listen and we'd all obey. God, thank you for life. Thank you for eternal life. Thank you for abundant life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Would you stand to your feet? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come?